everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. Here, slightly delayed, but still here nonetheless. I'm Wilkie, and I'm joined with Zenron. Hello. And previously on Shonen Archive, uh, Zen got cats. They are still <laughs> finding ways to interrupt the recording process, but it's important <laughs> that we find them homes and <laughs> make sure that they're, <laughs> they're all good. Seems so. like we're about to be two cats down. Two so, cats down. One's already gone. We have an interest in another one, so. Giant lull of me talking because my uh, brother opened the door for the cat, so that's also happening. (laughs) Yeah, I was about to say, uh uh-oh. No, don't worry, it's because it's a cat. My family's in the other room and they have the TV on, and so I don't know how much of that could potentially get picked up. So if you hear just large going to silence, assume it's because of that. Um, but there you go. There's the cat, cat update. Problems also, on both sides. Yes. Also, previously we talked about episodes uh, 24 and 25, where you gave us uh, your specific uh, opinions on it. So now we're good to go for Gintama's episodes 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So let's start with episode 26, which is called Don't Feel Embarrassed, Raise Your Hand and Speak Up, which is, I don't think was the name of the Crunchyroll one, <laughs> now that I think about it. Now that no, I it. it was, I don't remember what it was, but it was different on Crunchyroll. I did start saving them after starting with 27, but 26 I did not, because 26 was the one we were going to, I I watched so long ago, but <sighs> don't feel embarrassed. Go ahead, Zen, give us the plot breakdown of this one. Okay, so this one, uh, the the odd jobs crew are watching a convenience store, and they're really shitty at it. Um, Absolutely. And terrible. there's a guy like, yeah, they're terrible at it. And during all of the hullabaloo, Shimpachi catches someone stealing, and it turns out that the thief is one of his old friends uh, who has become a delinquent because the old friend shit himself in his youth. And Shinpachi <laughs> faked being asleep to not have to help him. Uh-huh. I forgot um, that was exactly and, what happened. Yes. And so uh, he blames Shinpachi for him falling to delinquency because he wants to be strong so that people can't make fun of him anymore. Uh, because of that one time that he shit himself when he was <laughs> a child. And then Shinpachi decides to come try to get him out of the gang to make it up to him. And so they he attacks the gang. And then uh, Kagura, Gintoki, and uh, Otai. Otai. Is that her Otai? name? Otai. Yeah, Otai. 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 Yeah. It's, it's, uh, his it's weird sister. because the, yeah, they put the O in front of it, so it always fucks me up. But it's Tai. I think they say Otai, something like that. So we'll just go with Tai. Okay. So yeah, Ot- Otai. Yeah. Uh, comes to help, and they have like a like Grand Prix combat derby situation going on they have what um, is classic in the 1950 delinquent movies which is basically a death race <laughs> yeah and uh but they don't realize like that they're death racing against the odd jobs crew who are like all superhuman as hell yeah. so they easily get past all of the traps and then it ends up becoming a foot race when Shimpachi accidentally crashes his bike into the horse of the gang leader because the gang leader is using a horse not a motorcycle (laughs) nope um and it seems like i guess the horse dies because it's just laying there and it never gets you don't (laughs) see it again never comes back um and then the uh shimpachi wins the foot race the the gets his friend out of the gang and they have like this little moment at the end where he's like i'm never gonna forgive you so don't do anything crazy like that on my behalf i get like as a little don't don't endanger yourself kind of thing. Uh, and then the episode ends. There is also at the very end, uh, they go back to the convenience store and it turns out they left Sadaharu in charge and they were taking care of it. Cause Hazagawa asked for it. And then when he shows up, it's just like Sadaharu is at the, he's at the helm and there's a bunch of homeless people inside. The store is completely destroyed. It's he's, like obliterated. Yeah. And yeah. And he goes, I have to stop trusting those jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that also the beginning of the episode starts with Ryuk uh, also saying, "Hey, don't don't stand too close and be in a well lit room if you're going to be watching the episode." <laughs> so continuation from the previous Death Note episode. Yeah, so, from the Death Note one where they're they're yeah. still in doing the Death Note poses too. Yes, 
uh, this episode, I think, is where I started to realize I think I might have a big thing for Shinpachi's sister. Because she is everywhere in this one, and she's like... <laughs> They show her as a kid in this episode, because um, back in the in the flashback where they say Shinpachi came to my rescue, it's not really him. He like says like, "Hey, leave him alone," and then he gets beat up and said, and then Tao comes up and, st- and then, starts. It's the, yeah, it's the sister that actually saves them. <laughs> she kicks ass. She's, I think I made a note here. Kid Tao drop kicking children. <laughs> Yeah, just beating the absolute shit out of them. And she also has, she keeps having these amazing lines that are supposed to be, like, super heartbreak, but when you actually say them out, they're, like, they're, like, supposed to be, like, wise sister sayings, but the things she's saying are just hilarious. Because she says when Shinpachi's talking about, like, he's feeling regret over not um, being there for his friend, like, what was he supposed to do? She says, if a friend is crying, cry with them. If they have a bad bowel movement, you have a bad bowel movement. Yeah. Yeah, they were like, if they're hurting, hurt with them. If they cry, cry with them. If they shit themselves, shit with them. <laughs> shit with them? Which is the worst advice to ever give to anyone. <laughs> and then when she shows up as, like, the gang boss leader, she completely, like, falls into the role. Like, she's saying dude at the end of every... I think all three of them are saying dude at the end of their sentences. Uh, when Kentucky's out of the race, she deliberately runs over his neck. Yeah, she hits him with the bike to get a boost. Yeah, she's just all, it all matters of just like b- badass, is a sort of say. I don't know the right word for it. I just know that I really like her <laughs> through this episode. <laughs> and when she's like getting excited about it, she, what does she say? If we could go three kilometers faster, we'd go back in time. <laughs> yes. And then when they stop her, she's like, we were going to go back in time. You prevented it. It's like, what are you talking about? Do you even know what you're doing right now? <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, she gets knocked out of the race because she accidentally rips off the gang leader's wig and she faints because he's yeah, bald. She, she she completely just gets knocked out from it. It's the one thing she can't handle. Uh, I also really do like that this episode takes this, this... They keep saying it over and over again about how they don't play it up for laughs. They just keep they keep taking it so seriously about the fact that he shit himself, and that's the reason why he feels like he's abandoned his friend. At no point that they're like, "Ha ha!" They don't make like poop jokes. They just kind of go like, "Man, I can't believe you left your friend behind when he needed to take a terrible dump." Like, at no, they take it so serious. They, I feel like it's actually probably a parody of like these type of delinquent type of uh, movies. Of like, similar to the 1950s, like a dude who takes a bad turn type of movies, where the drama is just like so insane, where they're taking it so dramatic that this entire plotline is built around the fact that one person shit themselves as a kid and never recovered, and never ever bounced back from that moment, <laughs> never recovered from it. So I appreciated that part, and then also I did like the beginning part where they're like actually trying to work. Because she's eating a tasty stick right in front of the customer. And he's like, where's your manager? And then uh, Kentucky shows up and he's also eating a tasty stick. And then mm-hmm. for some reason, she just takes his bag and starts microwaving it. She microwaves it, yeah. And she says, I don't know, but I'm working really hard at it. Yeah, because he says, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and she goes, I don't know, but I'm working really hard at it. Yep. Just the absolute worst people ever. <laughs> so and like I- uh, when they're... When, uh- She's eating the stick, and he's like, all the fucking crumbs are going in my bag. <laughs> yeah, she's eating it directly over the bag, just absolutely terrible. Yeah. So I liked it. I, I thought it was a very uh, good episode. I ended up really enjoying it, and I think a lot of it does come down to just me. This is my realization that I think I just really like Shinpachi's sister, and she has a lot. <laughs> she's a lot of the reasons why I like this, and she's in a fantastic getup. I'm a big fan of uh, Yankee-type dudes as well, so basically a parody of the people that Kuwabara are actually like (laughs) this is basically Uh a parody of those characters so I ended up liking it a whole bunch how'd you feel about it it was okay Uh, it wasn't my favorite I think the I didn't find the um I shit myself as a child joke that funny it wasn't like ew gross humor but it's just like the first time it was kind of funny but then they kept talking about it and I was like this is not that funny Funny, yeah, it's not that funny to keep bringing it up again. You're not carrying the episode on this joke. No. Um, it did have one joke that I thought was really funny, which was um, when Kagura is dragging that th- the like wagon, and she's catching up with the horse, and she yells for uh, Gintoki to come out the back, and it's just that hobo, yeah. the recurring hobo that's in the back. 
<laughs> That's right. I remember that. And then they, fuck, what happened to him in that moment? <laughs> Did she just like pick up the wrong guy, or is it just a continuation of that guy being confused for Gintoki? Yeah, she thinks it's Gintoki. Yeah, okay. and it's not. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, a very good episode, kind of just like, uh, you know, kind of just get back into the groove of things, kind of like. Funny enough, I always feel like the episodes we always come back to are usually the episode where we're like, all right, we need a basically a good header back into this world real quick. And they usually end up doing perfectly fine at that. They end up not being the best episodes that we ever ever been talking about, but they do end up being a good like, all right, let's remember this world real quick. That was good. All right, next one. That's what I kind of feel about <laughs> the episodes we usually first talk about. I don't think. We yeah, do- there's always the the so so ones. Yeah, yeah. Even though I do end up uh, liking them a whole bunch. <laughs> All right, next episode. Talking about the next... This one cuts back into the next one. The next one is, uh, as it's called here, there are some things that swords cannot cut, and on Crunchyroll it is called Some Things Can't Be Cut With a Sword. So very similar titles. Here we go. All next right, one. so this one is... Uh, they find a... It's uh, they're in the, like a wrestling ring. They're in a, with, and it's like a, it's like a girl wrestling league, right? Yes, it is. Uh, the idol, Shimpachi's favorite idol, is having a yeah, match. the girl Suchan. Suchan, yes, she's having a match. Uh, yeah, and then Sogo is there. Um, and they hit, so they go to an underground like arena, and he's like, "Look at this! This is a death match." And and then it, they realize that he wants them to help them like take it down. Uh, and they watch this guy, whose name is Kitamaru, uh, who's like the champion, uh, and he wins another fight. And so they go to like follow him and f- try to figure out what he's doing. And it turns out that he's like a nice priest who uh, has a bunch of kids that he's trying to uh, like take care of. Yeah, um, he's a but he doesn't want to kill people. Yeah, he's like he's remorseful over being a killer, and he just wants to leave. So he's trying to get the kids and get away right as this organization like attacks. Um, Shimpachi and Kagura try to fight them off, but while Kitamaru is running away, he's stabbed by a spear and ultimately killed. Um, they have like this sad moment at the odd jobs base where the kids come in and offer them all of their toys and as payment to go and avenge their uh, adopted father. And there's a cute moment where they each take one toy and walk out the door to go do it. Um, They have a big fight at the base where Gintoki fights the person who uh, killed him and kind of beats the shit out of him quite easily. And then the Shinsengumi also comes and takes down the fighting arena. But you see that the real boss um, escapes. They don't catch like the, the mastermind behind it. And then there's another sweet moment on the bridge where Gintoki, who fought wearing uh, Kitamaru's discarded mask, uh, tosses it up in the air and shatters it with his sword, saying that uh, the old man won't need it anymore in heaven and he can just wear his face freely. Yeah, this episode really takes a turn from where it begins. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Really, really good episode. Probably the best one of the five. Immediately off the top of my head, I think it is. There's the, I can't think of one. It, uh, there may one may come up later where I'm like, oh, wait, I like this one too. Th- but, this one uh, really does kind of come out of nowhere with how <laughs> like affecting it actually is. Yes, because it starts being extremely stupid. Yeah, um, it's very silly, the opening bit where they're watching. Yeah, the I really thought, thought it was going to go to like, oh my god, Okita also is a, an idol fan. I thought that was going to be the joke of the episode. Was yeah. not. It turns out he's only totally. there he, he likes seeing women fight because they make funny faces while going for each other's yeah. hair, as I think his exact <laughs> reasoning. Yeah, his exact reasoning is that he thinks that it's funny when women fight. Yes. <laughs> he's like, I like is, it. I like it seeing them fight, which is like, okay, that's a very honest reason as to why you like watching women fight. But yeah, the from the beginning of the setting up of the Rengoken, and then funny enough, even with Okita, because usually Okita at this point has been a very silly character, but something about what he's saying is so like like 
even with that one joke, outside of that one joke in the beginning, he's kind of all business here in the front. And I guess it doesn't really hit you up until he actually legitimately dies. <laughs> that that character actually gets stabbed. And I remember going like, oh, shit, is that little... Is that literally what you're doing here? And then it goes up to him and he has like an apology with the kids as they are basically watching him die. I was like, oh my fucking God, he's act- they're actually legitimately going to kill this man. Wait a minute. <laughs> that doesn't, it, it hits you in such a way that's like, I didn't see this ever actually going this way. Cause I think for the first time, I think I would consider this the first time where they took on a job and they kind of failed because the reason Kagura and Shinpachi were even there to begin with is because he told them to watch after him because he had a bad feeling about what might be going down if going down there. So you have to keep an eye on him for, for whatever reason. And he was right. So yeah, this episode, I, the specific notes I have here is that I understood the wrestling reference at the beginning where she calls herself Kagura Enoki, where she has like this weird chin. It's based off a Japanese wrestler, <laughs> Antonio okay. Enoki. So I actually knew that reference. I just felt like calling it out because it was a wrestling reference <laughs> and I liked that I got it. I think who is the, the guy who ends up um, getting killed, he ends up stabbing, is it Kentucky in the ass? And he says that you had a very suspicious ass, that that's the reason why he stabbed yes, him, I think. Yes, he does, he does like, the Kakashi thing. Yeah, the Thousand uh, Years of Death. The Thousand Control? Years of Death, yeah, on Kentucky's ass, and he says that, well, I didn't know what to do because it was a suspicious ass. <laughs> I like the idea of an ass looking suspicious. Um, Hichikata tries to offer his super heavy dipped in mayonnaise food and they immediately buff him and he feels like the Hichikata special is being, he like, he actually gets kind of sad about it, which I thought was funny. Yeah, he's like, he's like actually kind of offended that they all hate his food. <laughs> they 100% don't want it. Uh, they start doing a bit right before they're doing a steak da- stakeout where Kagura calls him Detective Pasta for some reason. And then he just, it, it, like, at the beginning he's fighting it and he's like, okay, fine, I guess I'm Detective Pasta. I forget what she calls him. He's like, you're Detective Pasta and I'm something else. And then when they start, like, he says act- to just call me uh, Yama-san because that's just her name. So Yama- she's like, respect, address me more respectfully. <laughs> And then when they're fighting, they're like, Doc, Detective Pasta, who <laughs> no, what? And like, they're actually, they're they're dropping their regular names to go with this bit that they've got going. Um, as and then leaving- I like how uh, he's like, he doesn't understand why that's his name. And he's like, why am I Detective Pasta? And then finally they're talking and he's like, I'm getting sick of this food. I want pasta. Oh, that's why I'm Detective <laughs> <laughs> And her, her response is, you're growing up. <laughs> That's the reason why you're Detective Pasta. Uh, there's a bit right before he's about to leave where in the background, Kagura is just choking <laughs> because they were eating food on their stakeout. And he said, you're very bad at it. And then she starts choking. And for the entirety of it, she's just like in the background silently choking. Yeah, just choking to death in the background. <laughs> yeah, which I thought was really good. I love that scene where the kids are offering his toys because I thought it was legitimately like kind of heartbreaking to see all these kids because they put up to it it goes like we have this is all we have and it's done in such a way that's very i guess emotionally manipulative or maybe not manipulative they hit me in the right emotions however you want to call it these kids giving up these toys to say like please just avenge him and they all take up the offering i like the toys that they take up too like the because uh, they're very serious about what they're about to do even though it's very silly and they're saying what they're about to do is very stupid because whatever this group is involved with it's obviously involved it's higher than what they can kind of imagine i think that's kind of what's being implied here is that for whatever reason the protection that this group has is probably larger than they are anticipating and maybe it's a they will regret doing it but they still go through it regardless. And I also like the some of the toys. It's like one of them was like a sticker. The other one is I know one of them is the Marcho gla- the Marcho glasses, which is what Okita gets. I don't yes, uh, Gintoki takes a sticker. Okita takes glasses. Shinpachi, I think, has like it's like a party hat and one of those things that you blow or something like that. Yeah, party favor. Uh, and I don't remember what uh, Kagura had. Yeah, yeah. They, they, but they all take, like, the little toys there. Um, also, a bit at the end, Okita says, because th- when they're talking about specifically the stuff that could end up backfiring them after they've taken care of everything, um, 
He says, if it ever comes down to it and you need to commit Simpuku, I'll be there with the sword to take it down. And then Kagura takes it as, uh, <laughs> she takes it as like, oh, great, now he's in love with me. Yeah, what did he say? Like, because uh, Hijikata's like, if you if you cause problems, you'll have to commit seppuku. And then Okita's like, yeah, but don't worry, I'll be there as your second. So if you chicken out, I'll just cut your head off instead. And Kagura's like, oh, great, he's into me. <laughs> <laughs> It was a very silly thing, and yeah, the the ending moment where he discards the mask is also very nice. So, this is a great episode. <laughs> really Extremely good. good episode. Yeah. Extremely good. What do you feel about it? Uh, from from top to bottom, super good episode. Even the beginning bit was like, even though it was completely jarring, it was still a funny opening bit. When when they're like, "Why are you here?" and he just goes, "Cause I like watching women fight." <laughs> it's really <laughs> fucking funny. It um. Is. They also take into questions uh, her actions being in the ring because they're they're debating like she's going the wrong directions. This isn't the way you're supposed to go if you're an idol. You're going downhill. And Shifaji's just like not hearing any of it. He's all here to support her in whatever endeavor she decides to go in. Uh, continue. Uh, the whole the whole um, Kitamaru story was really cute. Just the whole you know raising the kids doesn't want to be a bad person for their sake and the little moment where he's bleeding out and they don't realize and he's trying to talk to them like normal is very sweet uh i think my favorite scene is the one where gintoki spins the story about how he collects the stickers to to make the kid feel like the kid successfully like recruited his services and he's doing it on their behalf and he's not just doing it to go do it for himself yeah. is uh super sweet and i like when they each one by one go up and grab the toys and uh walk out the door including okita and it was even a good fight like a lot of the fights in this are like freeze frame hits where mm -hmm. they just like swing the sword and then it cuts to a still image of someone getting hit uh yeah. but the fight was actually pretty good in this i liked the fight yes it, it was, was a it was a really good episode i also like the part where he's explaining himself before he leaves where he says like I'm oh yeah I'm, about I'm how it, it doesn't matter yeah he's a, yeah he's like something is keeping him in track but if he doesn't do this then that thing that keeps him moving forward will disappear basically he says my soul will be teared apart if I don't help these kids that's like his last thing he says like that's the one thing that keeps me going is I don't the specific code that I live for the one thing that I really keeps me going is my soul and it will tear apart if I don't help these kids that's just the end of it. And he doesn't really say anything yeah, else. Yeah, I liked just... his um I liked his line to Hishikata where he was like uh even when I'm old and like my spine is bent, uh I want my soul to be straight. I was like, "Oh, damn. Yeah. I like this guy." Yeah, he's really cool. I really I really like Kintoki, like yeah. It's a great character. Fantastic stuff. So yeah, that was episode uh 27. Some great stuff. Again, it really is going to be interesting as we get into the further it, because the more I get the episodes that are just really good in this first season, I can't believe there are people who say this is bad. Well, I think the issue is that yeah, was, there are these really, really good ones, and then there's a lot of, like, what the fuck? <laughs> episodes, yeah, like, you know? fair enough. Because I, I, I'm not at the point where I'm disinterested in, like, the silly episodes, mm -hmm. but if I were to come back, like, after we're finished, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to come back and rewatch Kintama, there's a lot of these episodes I would not watch a second time. Yeah, that's fair enough. Not because I don't like them or didn't like them at the time. Like I think there's really only one episode I really didn't enjoy, yes. at least in some capacity. Um, but it's they're not like so good that I'd be like, oh yeah, I can't wait to re-experience kind of these episodes. But like, there are some that I probably would like the one with the father, with the, the idol's father, or like this one. Um, yeah are yeah. fucking great but there's yeah, a I, lot that i'm like mm, it's fine yeah, I, I could see that for sure i can understand that i guess there is a certain thing of like well, i guess when you have this many episodes it's different from when it's a story focused thing when it's more like a monster of a week thing it's kind of like similar to the x-files actually where there's specific episodes of the x-files in certain seat like for example season one where i'm like this is a fucking fantastic episode but then when I go back, I'm like, well, I would kind of just want to watch this one and not the ones that I don't remember being as good from the first season. So I think with that kind of mindset, it, it, it does make sense to me. Understandable perfectly. 
And speaking of understandable perfectly things, we have episode 28, Good Things Never Come in Twos, But Bad Things Do, which is also forbidden. Bad, good things never occur in secession, but bad things do, which is the translation we have here for the, the episode, which must be the exact actual meaning in Japanese or something. Yeah, probably the literal translation. Yes. This is the 28th. Let's go. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's about. Uh, okay, so the Shinsengumi's like leader, Kondo, yeah, um, ape gorilla man. Well, well, no, the guy above him. Ma- oh Matsu. yes, Matsu, yes. Chief yes. Matsu. Yes. Uh, yeah, is uh, he shows up at He's Kondo's chief, place and starts like, sh- yeah, he starts shooting up the house. And he's all pissed off because the Shinsengumi helps take down the, the Rengoku Kun, even though Kondo does not know what the fuck that is because he has no idea what happened. <laughs> um, and he's terrified that they're going to get killed by assassins because of it. And so he's going to like make Kondo come with him to this castle um, to see what they want. And then it finds out that they're like, all they say is basically like, wow, that was really impressive. Good job. Don't uh, fuck with us too hard, though. And, like, they they drive through the city doing a bunch of outrageous bullshit, meeting, like, every single character from the show, all of whom the chief of police think is an assassin every single time. <laughs> immediately, um, things. It, just immediately. And also, they bring um, Sachan for some reason, he, who he does said- nothing. I'm I'm not sure why. Like I understand that he was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna bring her because the best way to beat an assassin is to use an assassin. But she does literally nothing. Like I actually, as much as I like her as a character, I didn't like her in this episode. She kind of irritated me because all she did was like walk around and spout jokes about how like she likes to get beat up. Like she doesn't. I think at one point, Kondo even yells at her like, "Will you just shut the fuck up already, please?" Like shut up. He does because he's he's kind of having the worst day of his life. Yeah, because he's having like a shitty day, and he got a horoscope that morning that um, whatever his sign is, I don't remember what it was. The, the Virgo, um, I think. The Virgo, was yeah, it? would uh, would die today. Yes, and so he's like freaking horribly. the fuck out. Uh, it also has a really good scene with Ote, um, where she's calling him a gorilla and trying to play it off like she doesn't know it's him. And she starts just beating the shit out of him the as he's hanging out of the side of the car, just ass. absolutely beating his ass. This ass beating and is then, apparently uh, so legendary. When I showed a friend a still frame, he replied to me with the gift. <laughs> he knew exactly what episode <laughs> it was on. Yeah, it's uh, she just beats the absolute donkey dick out of this guy uh, as he's hanging out the side of a car door. And then finally, even Shimpachi was like, that's not a gorilla, that's Kondo. And she's like, oh, is it? Wow, and then she just walks away. <laughs> just, hmm, love that woman. Just something about it. Yeah. And then uh, he runs into, um, fuck, Tose and the cat girl, whose name I don't remember. Catherine. Her sidekick. Yeah, Catherine. Mm-hmm, Catherine. Uh, and he's like, they're assassins too. And they're going through the crosswalk and they're like staring at each other, like mean mugging each other. And then all she does is say, bikes should be in the road. And Kondo's like, what the fuck was that? And the, old, the guy was like, I'm just a scared old man. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. Oh, so Especially because when it is mine, he's like, I can see their aura. And this is the second time they've done this aura joke where they show up like JoJo characters. Yeah, they're like super ripped looking like JoJo characters standing there. Yeah, it's like their aura is just so strong. <laughs> And they were, like, just so <laughs> anti-them being on the road. <laughs> the bikes deserve to be there. Yeah, they didn't like that the bike was on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then at 1.2, so they're, they commandeer a three-man bicycle because yeah. they uh, they don't have a car. And so that's when they, they obviously they get yelled at by Atose. And then at some point, randomly, uh, Sachan is just like, ah, oh, I can't see anything in front of me but darkness. And she pulls a <laughs> knife out and stabs Kondo in the ass with a knife for like right, no okay. reason. And then she goes like, the darkness is faded away or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the darkness is lifted. <laughs> He's gone from me. Oh yeah, and then uh, they hit Elizabeth with their car, like, like seriously so hit her. Amazing! And this it, is such a good <laughs> shot where Elizabeth is. 
Well, yeah, just getting blasted, and it's like super good quality art, and she's like spinning out, and she got hit three different angles. This is like fucking if if you 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 Hakusho show is coming back for an anime and is starting up an episode one, this is how your she would get hit by a car with how much detail they put into it. Yeah, Elizabeth gets fucking blasted, and so Katsura keeps chasing them to like get revenge. Yes, no one will uh, hurt Elizabeth. Yeah. yeah. And he gets, so they think he's he's trying to get like retribution, and uh, at the end they finally get away, and they end up using like a a cart because Kondo takes uh, Kagura's cart, mm-hmm. and he's dra- he's dragging them away in the cart, and uh, Katsura shows up clinging to the back of the same truck he was clinging to the first time, <laughs> and he just goes divine retribution, and throws a bomb into the cart. And then uh, Sachan is going to throw it away. But then right when she's about to throw it away, Gintoki drives by and she like freezes up because she sees him and just drops the bomb right where they are. Yep. And he assumes his bugger did that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's he's all like, the what? context he had. <laughs> So confused over what he just saw. Which is, I think is actually legitimately the only reason she's with them is for this one dumb For the gag one joke of that end. happening? Yeah. yeah the, they're like, someone's just like, we need to figure out a way to put in Gintoki at the end. How does that make sense? All right, here, I guess. <laughs> we need to have her with them for some reason, though. That's my assumption, anyway. Uh, but yeah. And apparently, so... Hear me out on this. I don't know if this is right, but uh, I'm looking at the episode, like, fun facts trivia. Mm-hmm. And apparently, the beating that she gives to Kondo is supposed to be this. Holy shit, it is! <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is! It's from fucking Epo! <laughs> it's the Hajime no Epo fucking ass whooping gift that everyone knows. Oh fuck! Yes, it is. <laughs> oh my god! That's what she's doing to Kondo at the side of the car. God, that's so good. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. I just thought she was just like spectacularly beating his ass for something. That's good, man. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> she uses the Dempsey roll. That's right. Okay. Okay, that also explains why I like her so much. Because I also like you both. <laughs> it's a really good scene. It is fantastically done. Uh and then they end right the last person they basically meet is uh the Marlon Brando prince. <laughs> Who at this point feels like uh is the one character that only shows up so someone can get sh- to shit on him really quick. <laughs> yeah, like really... he only shows up to get like fucked with. It's really funny actually. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, ah, oh, hello. And then they're like, his side is like, please rescue me. And then they take it. And then I think, uh, yeah, they end up hijacking him. And then, yeah, then they get to the organization. The final thing in the in the chain is Gintoki is the, fi- the, the final thing. And then I think they're all happy because it looks like they're not being killed. And then that's when he tries to... No, no, you tell us how it ended. I forgot. You're the one summarizing it. <laughs> uh yeah they just they get to the castle after the bomb goes off it just kind of skips them there like it doesn't um show them traveling anymore they're just at the castle and they're like uh they're just warned like hey watch where you fuck around now because we will get cranky but that was pretty cool so see ya yeah. and that's pretty much it and they're like huh I think, the, and what does Kondo say? I think I would have done better today if you just hadn't come with me. <laughs> he does. He feels like there's something about what they're saying, which is funny because this is the, fir- the first time that um, after he's done what he's saying, he turns really serious for a moment and he goes like, hmm. Like there's something about what they're saying about him is like, okay, interesting. They're not going to go me back for this for whatever reason, but okay, fine. Yeah. And then uh, he sees Ote again, and he gets all excited, and he runs after her. And he's like, I knew that was a fake horoscope. There's no way anything bad would happen. And then he trips on a rock and hits her in the head. Yeah, he chops her. And it just shows her, like, yeah, he chops her. And so she's got him by the wrist, like, looking all pissed off. And then the episode ends. Great. This is, uh, this episode. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's another one of the episodes similar to the one with um, Hasegawa, where it was a lot of the characters showing up for a brief bit and then doing their bit and then hanging out. But I don't know. I really like these episodes where it's like that, where characters get to show up, do their thing. These, this one even introduces them with the new, with the the new character with the Matsu, Mats. Uh, is it Matsu? I just call him Matsu. I think it's okay. Matsuida or something like that. Let's go with Matsu. Matsuida. Uh, Matsu. Really good. They also, I guess, because she shows up again. They also introduce the weather girl, the one who predicts the um bad fortune is coming for Kondo and for people specifically like him i think i think it was oh, damn it i f- wish i remember what the sign was maybe it was v- v- virgo or something like that it doesn't matter it, the, the only th- reason it matters is because both him and matsu share share the same sign so when they get in the car together he keeps saying like i don't want to go in there with you because once he hears that they share the same thing that he doesn't want to and oh funny yeah enough, he's like he's trying to climb out of the car while it's going yeah he's like no no let me out let me out and funny enough he's also wearing red which is the lucky color of the day because that's the two things that uh, Hijikata and Okita give to him after they after he hears the news and he's like, oh, come on. But the, the, the reason they say it's not the lucky number, they say wear red because it will make the blood less obvious when you start bleeding out and dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then both uh, Hijikata and Okita give him something red. And then later on when he learns about why he's getting the meeting, he immediately fl- flashes back to them giving him the scarf. He's like, those bastards. <laughs> they did yep, it while I was like, gone. Those fuckers. They did it while I was gone. <laughs> uh, also, when they take down Hasegawa, when the, his reasoning is that he wears sunglasses, he must be an assassin. And he's also wearing yeah, sunglasses. Yeah, 90% of people who wear sunglasses are assassins, is what he says. Yeah, <laughs> fucking great. Especially because when he shoots it, he's just a giant explosion. We don't see any signs of that he's okay or anything. We just see the, yeah, the aftermath of the sunglasses. Yeah, and then his broken sunglasses yeah, go flying out of the explosion. That's all that's left. Um, Yeah, this episode was... <laughs> I don't know, it was a lot of jokes back and back. Not all of them hit, like you said. I think some of the... You know, obviously, the except for the one joke in the end, all she really has is jokes about being wanting to get abused in some ways, cases or or another, which it feels like is the main. Yeah, reason pretty much. Like ninety percent of her dialogue is like, "Ah, uh, don't touch me, weird man. I'm in love with Gintoki, and he's the only one that can beat me up." And it's like, yeah. okay, but do and something she also, also. Yeah, she keeps saying a bunch of items are actually Gintoki items that will help her out when <laughs> whenever she meets him again, like to help him with sleeping or something like that. She keeps calling random items that. Um the one joke she had though that was funny was when she couldn't see uh and he gave her a gun <laughs> and he was like, yes. "Here, you get this." <laughs> and he gave her a gun and she's like waving it around like, "I don't know. I can't really see what it is. Is it one of those things that helps with bad breath?" And she points it, like, right at Kondo's face. First directly at her face, and then his face. Yeah, and he's like, no, please, God. I also liked her explaining the darkness, and it's just his ass. Because it really is just a close-up of his ass as he's in the the Mm -hmm. mic. She breaks it down. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Again, the Elizabeth getting fucking run over, I had to stop. Elizabeth getting run over is by far the funniest part of the episode. Maybe the funniest gag of every episode. Today. It might also be the it's, funniest it's, gag of Elizabeth. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> but yeah, it's easily the funniest thing Elizabeth has ever done. Yeah, she just it, gets blasted by this car and they just leave her. They just leave her behind and then the, the, <laughs> the other funny thing about him is how much just... Uh, Kath, how much he, how much Elizabeth is loved by uh, Katsu? By Katsu, yeah. he just loves Elizabeth so much that when he's ready yeah, he, for he gets divine, super offended. Yeah, when she gets hit, and he's trying to like kill them in retribution. Yeah, he thinks that for whatever reason Elizabeth is done for, but it's okay. I think we don't see Elizabeth ever again, but I'm assuming that they're perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, that fucking run over was so intense, and it was a three, I think the thing that over the, took it over the top was the three different camera angles for it. Yeah, and, and like then the, the last one had, like, the, the anime, like, accentuation color palette and, like, the extra shading. Yeah, I forget, that they have a sign-up to say, like, basically, like, bleh? Like, I don't remember if there was, like, a specific thing. No, I don't think they held up a sign, I think they just went flying through the air. Yeah, so it's the ultimate side of, like, there's just no response on this one, my guy. Gone. 
And then now that you brought it up, man, that fact that the, the Otai was basically making a reference to Hajime no Ippo, I think that just solidifies me at this point. This is my girl. <laughs> it's, just, it's so funny that she's beating the shit out of him. That ass kicking is just so intense. And funny, like you said, Shinpachi also really doesn't do anything, but his one line delivery is fantastic because he's just going, that's him. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, because he's, he's like, not, like buying her obvious lie that she's like, oh, it's a gorilla. Yeah. And he's for some reason like, what? Nuh-uh. <laughs> it's an intense ass kicking. And yeah, I ended up enjoying it a whole bunch. It was a very silly. Uh, I've been waiting for kind of a condo episode. And funny enough, this does not improve his character whatsoever. He is still the same nope. dude. <laughs> Except for now, I really do respect the fact that he is still going for Ota, even though she has beaten him so bad that most men would pack up their bags and say no but he still <laughs> wants to go for it yeah it's Ooh. really funny how every time she treats him like shit he's always like ah yeah that's such a good quality that yes and i'm kind of with him <laughs> she's so this. strong she's so strong <laughs> and i'm like i'm i'm rooting for him i'm like yes you idiot go for it chase your dreams <laughs> and so i liked it on that part um <laughs> i enjoyed it <laughs> I, I like it. Good episode for me. What do you think, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was a really good episode. It was probably my second favorite. It, it didn't come close to the last one for me, but uh, either this one or the next one were also very good. Nah, I think the next one might be a little bit better. But the... Uh, or no, not the next one, the last one. Episode 30, I think, might be my second favorite. But um, this one's still really good. The Elizabeth getting hit by a car gag is one of the funniest things that has happened. In all of Gintama so far. <laughs> Actually, fun um, enough for the throughout the uh, episode, maybe I'll just put it so that all it's all because usually I do a cover photo for it. Maybe all three of them are the Elizabeth being run over, but at different times. The three different camera angles. <laughs> yeah, the of three. Elizabeth <laughs> being run over. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's that shit was so funny, and then the the ass beating that he gets from Ote is funny. Um, and like I didn't find the police chief that funny because again. He was kind of his gag was kind of one note, and like I think Saichan being there kind of ruined it a little bit. But uh, the when he fucking has like shot every single character that he thought was an assassin up to that point, and then he sees um, Otose and he like fucking freaks out and he's like crying. <laughs> yeah, that's the part. <laughs> really good. It's pretty good. I'm just a scared man. <laughs> so yeah, terrible. he's like I'm just a scared old man. <laughs> Uh, very good nice episode 28 good job <laughs> i did also like that this is also a follow-up what, what could have potentially been an extremely serious potential thing with the, the, considering the group and organization of last time but it turns out like no it was just, whatever feelings they have they're okay with it for now they're just saying hey watch yourself for next time maybe yeah, so kind of yeah don't get don't get crazy yeah, don't get too full of yourselves. So, that was episode 28. And now let's go on, oh, excuse me, to episode 29, which is a two-parter. Part one. Yeah, I tend to not like the two-part episodes. I feel like they always end up being kind of meh. One ends up being better than the other. That's always, yes. Feeling. Yeah. Don't panic, there's a return policy, and I told you to pay attention to the news. I don't know what they call the other one in the uh, Crunchyroll because Crunchyroll shit was like in the too Crunchyroll. long. It's too long. <laughs> These two part ones are too long of a title. So let's just go with that one. So anyway, yeah, tell so, us what uh, there's a return policy. Uh, in part one, Kagura buys a bunch of shit from like the shopping network, and uh, they all they take it back to return it because she can't pay for it anyway. And she's all mad about it, so she steals Gintoki's sword um, to try to pawn it off to make money so she can buy her things on the shopping channel. And she gets attacked by a sword collecting Amanto, who's like, I want to be the strongest in the universe, and I'm going to do it with this magic sword or whatever called the Star Destroyer. Um, and then he ends up like beating a bunch of people, and none of them are the sword he's looking for. And then he hears about Kagura using Gintoki's sword to destroy a bridge in frustration. 
So he chases her down to try to get the sword from her. Um, she ends up beating him by, I think, literally sticking the sword in his ass while he's hanging on the side of a building. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she finds out that, like, Kentucky didn't give a shit about the sword. Because he, like, bought it off the same shopping network that uh, she was buying shit from. And then that's where the episode ends. Yeah, and that he wanted to buy a new sword because uh, it smells like curry. He dropped curry on yeah, it. Yeah, because he spilled like curry. curry on his other sword. Yeah, and the, and the reoccurring joke every time she tries to sell it is, this smells like curry. We're not going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to buy this. It smells like curry. Yeah, and it also reveals that the only reason he tries to keep the sword a mystery is to, <laughs> it's, a, it's for Shinpachi's sake, so there's just still some mystery around it, but it's basically just a Home Shopping Network sword, <laughs> nothing really yeah, that impressive about it. there's nothing fancy about it at all. Yep, and that, yep, part, and now here we are with part B, I told you to pay attention to the news, aka Cockroach invades everything. Yeah, uh, Kagura wakes up in a panic that there's a cockroach in her room, and then they find it, and it's like a giant alien cockroach. Um, and it turns out they're like invading, and if you try to kill one, it will call all the others. And they do try to kill it, because they don't pay attention to the news. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turns out that the queen is one of the idiot prince's pets. And he literally just wrote Goro on her back. <laughs> and the, the trick to stopping the invasion is finding her and killing her. And Gintoki learns this from Shinpachi after he had already found and released that cockroach. So he has like a mental breakdown that he's doomed the entire planet to death by cockroach because he let that one go. And then uh, that one runs around upstairs and Sadaharu peeks out from wherever it's sleeping and squishes it. Yep. And then <laughs> episode ends on that part. Yeah, it's these two were the cockroach one. I thought was funnier. Um, they're both kind of dumb. Nothing yes. really happens in either one. Not the the only thing that really happens is I guess the reveal of what uh, Gintoki's sword is actually, because we've actually mentioned before that that sword seems stronger than any actual le legitimate sword. <laughs> So what was the reason behind it? Now we learned that it's actually from uh, some planet far away, and it's carved from the tree, and that's the reason why. Or who even knows if that's true, because the home shopping network, for all we know, could be fucking lying. Also, Kagura very easily snaps it in half. She does at the end. She slaps it super easily. Uh, I also did like the, at least in part one, I like the part where they're the, the, the white people voice that they keep doing. Do oh, you know, on the Home Shopping Channel? Yeah, so if you don't know, yeah. there's a very specific way that I guess uh, white white people or people who don't natively speak Japanese speak. They do a very, like, oh, hundo! Like, they do, a very, like, they do the same thing for I think when a character is uh, black, but to see them do it with a character who is white is super funny to me because they're like, oh, Marta! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> So I like that. And also the continuing weird like places, every time they would go back to it, it'd be like, fuck, what was the, the second commercial when they're doing the sword thing? Is like, we surrounded you. Now you're going oh, to- Oh yeah, he's like, oh no, I'm being attacked by samurai. <laughs> oh, so samurai. <laughs> and then she pops out, it's the one who's like basically saying, is like, yes, we will get your retribution for what you have done. <laughs> I thought that was silly. I like stupid home shopping network things, though. And I also really like that accent. I also, in general, accents are funny. But to hear them do an accent of someone trying to do Japanese when they themselves do Japanese is a good insight as to what they think we sound like. Yeah, it's exactly what uh, they think we sound like. Yes, it's like hearing an English person do an American accent. It's like, oh, I guess that's how we sound like to you. Fair enough. And the part two one uh, is very silly. The the part I like is that they keep going back to Prince Hada and continuously shitting on him at every given moment. Yeah. Because at, at one point he calls them. Don't idiot. they eventually cut the broadcast so that the broadcaster can beat the shit out of him? Yeah. No, they cut back in because he they 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 cut it because he reveals that he's the reason why the cockroaches are invading. And when they cut back to it, the dude has him in a fucking sharpshooter, and he's like, "This is the way you stop him." But everyone's like, they're cheering him on as he's like. Yeah, the shit out of the prince. 
<laughs> Which is great because throughout the entire broadcast, he keeps he starts in the beginning calling him Prince Hada, and then he says idiot. Uh, I mean, uh, Prince, and he's like, you were trying to say idiot, and then later on he would say like uh, idiot. I mean Hada. And then he would go, later on, he would go, like, Prince Hada, I mean, idiot, uh, I mean, Prince, idiot, Hada. <laughs> yeah, he finally he's, was just, like, idiot, Prince. <laughs> he's like, why did you go back and add the idiot? Because you had it perfectly fine in the beginning, but now you're just doing it on purpose. <laughs> uh, I also did, like, when he does, like, the freak out, and he goes, like, because he picks up Kagar and he goes, like, oh, we're going to go have a steak dinner or something because I've doomed the yeah, world. Yeah, he's, like, carrying her on his back, and they're, like, in pajamas, freak Kagura's like gone insane and she's counting herself to sleep by counting cockroaches instead of sheep. Yeah. Very silly episodes. Both of them very silly. <laughs> but they were okay. I enjoyed they my were time all right. it. They were alright. It was just yeah. kind of fluff. Yeah, very easy fluff, but not like offensive fluff. Just kind of like, haha. Kinda I guess what's the best way is it's kinda like a fruit roll-up. I could criticize a fruit roll-up, but it's no real point to it. It was sweet, so it all works out for me. There's plenty of things wrong yeah. with a fruit roll-up, but, uh, you know, it tasted sweet and it's all right. It's, it's gone now. Yeah, I'm not I'm not upset about eating one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, does, uh, instead of saying help me, doesn't he say herpes or something like that? Hump me or something? Uh, in the Crunchyroll one, he says hump me, yeah. Apparently in here he And then says, Gintoki keeps correcting him over and over again that it's not hump me, it's help me. <laughs> there we go. All right, then. And here we are on the final episode. And by final episode, I'm just me in episode 30. Even teen idols act like you guys, or even idols do roughly the same thing as you. Episode 30. Yeah, so this one, uh, it breaks in the news that Suchan, the idol, uh, has a boyfriend. And every time the nerds read it, they like start vomiting blood. <laughs> Having uh, the typical <laughs> idol reaction, the idol fan reaction yeah. to hearing that their yeah. their favorite has <laughs> gone dating. Yeah, uh, and then she brings them a threatening note. It's like a death threat letter, uh, asking them to help protect her. And they keep showing this suspicious guy who looks like the stereotypical anime, like. We want to show a character doing something, but we don't want to reveal to the audience who they are, so they're just, like, shaded out. Yeah, the shadowy figure um, that, yeah. that you see in Detective and, Conan all the time is the specific reaction that they say. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're trying to solve the crime, and then they think that uh, there's a murder committed because the producer is, like, supposedly dead in the hot tub, or, like, the hot spring, or wherever the fuck he is. Mm-hmm. And then they find out that the guy that she's dating is, like, getting pissed off because he thinks the scandal is a waste of time. And he doesn't like that she's uh, not, like, putting out for him. And he's, and then Shinpachi, like, uh, attacks him until he passes out. Uh, and then they find the shadowy figure and they chase him down in an extremely funny chase sequence. Because they're they're running through movie sets. And they keep fucking up the sets and, like, the TV shows and, like, the weather and stuff. Yeah. And then it cuts to like the green room or whatever, like the control room. And they're like, cut to commercial, cut to commercial. And then they run through the control room <laughs> also. <laughs> like yeah, as they're ready. doing it. Yeah, ready for yeah. everything. Yeah. Uh, and then it finds out that he's just a creepy stalker, but he's not like, he didn't send her the threatening note. And we find out that the person who sent the threatening note was actually the mother um, because she wanted to protect her daughter. And Suchai kind of has this sad bit at the end where she's like, I basically, you know, this ruined my reputation. And then the guy was an asshole anyway. So I'm kind of just, I've got nothing now. And then her fan club shows up and Shinpachi's like, yeah, we're still crazy weirdos for you. Don't worry about it. We're still crazy weirdos. Yeah, we're still crazy weirdos. And then at the end, they reveal that the guy wasn't actually murdered. He was just asleep. Yeah, he just fell asleep in the hot spring. Yeah, and everything was perfectly fine. Uh, this episode, now that I've looked at the thumbnail that we have here for the wiki explanation for it, they have so many silly, dumb detective references in here. Yes, there are so many. So um, many. I still think my my favorite bit from the episode is either the Shadow Man, because that one's really good, or uh, when they find the crime scene with the supposedly dead producer. And they think it's too yeah. boring. Uh-huh. 
So Kagura's like uh, writing with his finger, like a message, and then Kentucky's like, "Oh my god, his dying message." <laughs> It's so good because they just randomly put on gloves and go, all right, we're out of here now. <laughs> they're just like, yeah, they're they're telling like, everyone, this is our crime scene now. Everyone, please back away. And as they're going into the cops, they're trying to stop. Like, what are you doing? It's like, no, no, let us through. I thought that was really funny because in the background, as they're talking, they keep showing Kagura fighting with them <laughs> over what she's doing with them. Uh, I also really like the gag where they're having the um, backstory of to why does Shinpachi care so much about this specific idol. And he talks about before he met Gintoki when he was at his lowest in life. And he didn't really understand if he was going to go on. He heard someone singing in the... Not like in the alleyway, but out in the open. And it really motivated yeah, him. Like a street performance. Yeah, like a street performance. And he said it really helped him go f- move forward. He had no idea what she was saying, which is very important because when they do show you, I don't know, they don't translate what she's saying, but they keep bleeping it out <laughs> as she's singing. Yeah. <laughs> which was really funny because there's beeping. He keeps beeping at the background as he gets more and more like sentimental and emotional, saying like, "It was really important to my life, and you know, it really helped me out in a time where I didn't really feel like there was hope." And you hear her singing in the background, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> like censoring it, which is really funny. Um, there was also a reference that I did not expect, and I remembered, oh yeah, this is 2006, I guess he would be around. There was a reference to the wrestler Hard Gay, which had not, <laughs> I had not heard that name in so many years. Oh yeah, when she says that her first boyfriend was Hard Gay. And then she goes like, what? And then I, I immediately put down, I can't believe that there's a Hard Gay reference. <laughs> That's the weirdest <laughs> one they could have done. Uh, I forget i think it's when they're trying to explain there's a lot of also good detective gags in general like when he's saying like bro Gintoki says like i've solved it bring everyone together he just starts randomly accusing people <laughs> saying you did it yeah and he's like <laughs> he goes to every single person and he's like it was you it was you he's like but i have an alibi oh yes of course because it was you <laughs> he was like no yeah and like- then his his reasoning for one of them was that their mole looks suspicious <laughs> your mole is very suspicious uh yeah i ended up really liking this episode i I think it was pretty strong i also like that um when they're saying specifically like kentoki tells them you have to face reality this is why you don't fall in love with an idol you have to be like me and fall in love with the weather girl and then immediately the next thing on the news is the weather girl has been married which is the same one that we've been seeing throughout the other episodes and he's immediately joining it of like tearing down the the numbers on the wall for the calendar (laughs) In extreme depression. Uh, the, um, there's also a bit where Kagura says specifically when, because when the asshole dude shows up, they said like, "How come you're not interested?" You know, uh, he is the one of the biggest dudes from a boy band. She's like, "I'm not interested in boy singers. A man's worth is determined by his flavors," and she never gives any explanation further. Yeah, there's no further explanation Just as like, to what that means. No explanation whatsoever. Just says, go with her on this one, which I appreciate. <laughs> and also when there's a montage where they said, let's really work hard. Shimpachi does all the work. And they're like, they show them in the office actively doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, just doing literally nothing the whole time. Absolutely nothing. Like, either like, sleep. I think in Toki's sleeping, Kagura's playing with Sadaharu. And then Shimpachi's like out there on the streets looking for the next beat. <laughs> Like, actually trying to help, and they are doing absolutely nothing. So, yeah, this episode... I also like uh, when the mother's confessing, and uh, every time it cuts back to the group, uh, Kagura and Gintoki are in different, like, detective outfits. Yeah. Until they're eventually on a monk outfit, and he has to, like, break it and goes, like, what the hell are you guys doing? What even is that a reference yeah, to? like, why are you in monk outfits? And then Kagura rings, like, the little monk bell. Little monk bell? Uh, there's also a bit, which I don't know where it's from, but where, like, in Toki's dressed up as, like, this detective dude, and he keeps saying, like, ah, yes, in this episode, here's the ramifications of what we've had so far. <laughs> like, I don't know how to say specifically what this It has to be, like, a Japanese detective of some kind. I have no idea what he's parodying this one. <laughs> oh, you mean when he's in the suit with, like, his hair brushed down and stuff? Yes. There's, like, so many specific ones that I don't know what... It, I think the wiki actually has it, so... Uh, damn, I don't know. There's, there's so, so many, many references, references here. Yeah, yeah it's there's a lot. So many. Yeah, I actually thought for a brief second that there might have been a Columbo one, but I can't confirm if it's Columbo or not. 
But yeah, either way, I really like this one. I think between them all, I still think that the... Yeah, between them all, I still think 27 would be my favorite of this one. But this one's really good, too. Same. Yeah, Kitamaru was still the big winner for me. Um, yeah. But it was really good. I did really like this one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the Shadow Man guy got me. That shit was really fucking funny. Uh, when uh, something about them running through every set and then in the control room like as they're reacting to what they're doing when the, them running through the control room was fucking funny that got me <laughs> that, like, <laughs> I, that hit me hard for some reason I don't know why um, and then I like how he like the, the shadow man completely openly admits to being like a creepy stalker but he's like but I didn't send the letter <laughs> I didn't do that. I was like, I yes, I'm so many other things, but I'm not that. It's like, who runs yeah. through it? It's like, that was me. But, yeah, they were like, oh, so you're saying you didn't ransack her office and leave this note? And he's like, okay, no, I went through the office. <laughs> I just didn't leave the note. Swear it wasn't me. At what point in the episode did you figure out it was the mom? Uh, Pretty early on, actually. The, like, because, the second she showed up? Pretty much right, right when she was like, that this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, okay. She did. So it was her. I was like, yep. Yeah. Okay, it was you. Uh huh. Anytime I watch a mystery anything, I remember that um, Neo. If you don't know Neo, great, great dude, friend of ours. Uh, anytime he watches a detective thing, he immediately knows the answer to everything. <laughs> yeah, he always figures it out. Yep. Yeah. So for this one, the second mystery show, I was like, I wonder how long it would take me. And then when I asked, I was like, Ah, nope, I bet it's her. <laughs> and that's it. The only yeah. thing I didn't expect was they—they the- they were not very transparent or not very, uh, whatever the opposite of transparent is yeah. about it. <laughs> Subtle. Uh, at least the shadow thing was actually some guy didn't expect where they were like, Oh no, it's actually. Per-. And then when they say, it's like, Oh yeah, that's that dude that keeps showing up. <laughs> like she's very clearly like, No, that's what he looked like. He looked like a shadowy person. <laughs> Yeah, when she's like, oh, yeah, that guy's been everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's been absolutely everywhere. Everywhere I look back, he's there. <laughs> so pretty good. <laughs> good batch of episodes, I would say here. Now that we've gone through a mile, there's so much in this one. I really like the return of uh, Otsu over here. I appreciated her coming back. She's been the, I like yeah. that she came back for the, the silly wrestler ba- gag in there, but I like to see her come back as well. Nice. Yeah, I do like her uh, as a character. I think that she's a good character. Yeah. Um, I also liked how they referenced her dad, and Gintoki was like, oh, yeah, how is your dad? Like, yeah, I thought that was cute. Um, yeah, good follow-up on that. And he's like, oh, yeah, he, yeah, the second he heard about this, he was ready to bust out of prison. And he's like, well, let's solve this real quick then. <laughs> because yeah, well, let's, let's hurry up and fix this, yeah. Uh, pretty good. Uh, let's see... And with this, I think that's it for now. So next week we will try and see. It looks like the the, the previous on it was the next one is he's going to be losing his memory. And based off of his Wikipedia, they consider this an arc of some kind. So we'll be kind of interested to see it. Oh, now that we've seen it a little bit okay. more, do you have any specifics about the the OP and the ED now that you've had them a little bit longer? Ah, uh, they're okay. They're both they're they're much more generic than uh, like Mr. Raindrop was. Um. I'm so so on the songs. I don't I don't like them quite as much as like I liked Fusengam. Um that's still my favorite one that they've done so far of any of the the songs. Yeah, yeah. Um but all in all, it was they're fine. Yeah. They're all right. I figure at some point it'd be fun um once we have enough to do a kind of like look back through do a what I would call a special shonen archive. Oh my god, this is going to be demonetized. Please leave a like because holy shit, I'm making nothing on this. <laughs> Help where us. We, yeah. <laughs> where we specifically here for the OPs and EDs of the shows of we specifically have watched. So for the beginning it would be Gin- Gintama and Yu-Gi-Oh GX and kind of rank them for how we feel at the moment. <laughs> I would I would totally do that. That sounds yeah. great. That sounds like a lot of fun. And then uh, to make sure that there's actually music in it, I would have to put up a giant preface saying like, holy shit, I'm not making anything off of this. Like 27 different <laughs> Japanese music companies have laid claim to this. Uh, we'll figure out. How to yeah, do I wouldn't it. even monetize it. I would just leave it unmonetized. Guess, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Whenever I try and hit the no monetize, they go like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, these people would like to monetize it. So yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that does happen. <laughs> that You're, that's probably going to happen. Yeah, but, eh, when, but I'll make sure hey. to preface it when we do the episode yeah. and say, like, I don't control the ads here. Please. Uh, 
Please don't don't, uh, get ang- don't get angry at me yeah. for it. <laughs> when they put up like twenty seven ads because we do over an hour of talking. But anyway, good end of the match. We will be back next week for uh, episodes thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, and thirty five. And we will almost. I'm surprised that we've made it to thirty episodes again, Thomas. Then. I think that's a. I know we're making good progress. Yeah, we are actually, and it's funny to think that we are also starting another series. So if you don't know, Yu Gi Oh GX will probably be there either Tuesday. The original plan was Tuesday, but I'll probably move it to Wednesday, and then next week after that, we'll be doing Yu Gi Oh GX, which is going to be episodes one through uh, six to begin with. There, so we're going to be making some progress and keeping up with our schedule of things. Very good on us. We will keep trying to see at least uh five episodes and if we don't do five episodes expect at least two if we're too busy two will be perfectly fine for both of us to do i'd say yep we'll manage yeah but anyway thanks a lot for watching it all the way to the end as always you can uh actually i've never said anything like as promotional at the end so hey you guys have a good day all right you guys have a good day (laughs) goodbye everybody we'll see you guys next time huh and maybe that'll be yes we really need to find a better ending for this. Oh, he promised this last yeah, we week. Need some sort of ending. The, the the song I play at the end really carries the heavy load of <laughs> the endings for Shonen Archive. Because <laughs> I just play music on as we drattle on until the end. Goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye, Zim. Goodbye, everybody. Right. Just to be sure. <laughs>